So next I'm going to start building up the head. This, uh, this side of the head has been off to the machine shop. Um, it's a bit heavy for me to turn over at the moment, but uh, the top side, um, the manufacturer uses a plain sealant. Um, so it's an anaer anaerobic sealant that cures in the absence of air. There is no gasket. So this top plate here um, also constitutes the, uh, the, the other half of the, band, uh, the can bearings as well. So and obviously in here we've got uh, head bolts and then all these, all these other holes is where the uh, hydraulic valve lifters go. And there we can see the valves, obviously four valves for some of their 16 valves. These large holes are where the injectors go, the common rail injectors. And these bolts are for the pivot bolt for the retainer and the clamping bolt for the retainer. But what I'm going to start with is the back end of the cylinder head which uh, will be the vacuum pump that will go here, driven off the camshaft. The EGR cooler, which is sitting here. Um, we'll start with that. Oh, also the, um, the temperature sender uh, that goes into the back of the cylinder head here. Uh, this is it here. It actually uses a, um, looks like a, a copper crush washer, which I don't have a replacement for, so I'm actually going to put it in with some uh, some uh, thread sealant for, uh, for this sort of application. So I'll, I'll go and look up all my tensions and torques and find the fasteners in my tub of, uh, tub of fasteners and uh, we'll get cracking. Okay, so what I'm gonna start with on the end of the cylinder head here is the, the uh, coolant sensor, which threads in that hole there. Now it does have copper crush washers on it that I don't have replacement for. So I'm gonna use some of this uh, Permatex thread sealant. I've used that successfully uh, before. So I'll just apply some to the thread and get that started into the hole. So the sensor is uh, now in the hole and now I'll, t I'll tighten it up. Now the tension is 22 newton meters, which I've set on my old uh, trusty Warren and Brown. And here I'm actually using a uh, claw foot wrench, uh, given that I can't get a socket over that sensor. So let's see how we go one handed. I'm going to push the pin in. Okay, so I don't want to throw the head on the floor while I'm doing this, so I'll just put the camera down. It's actually my iPhone. And see if I can prop it up so you can see what I'm doing. All right, here we go. Here we go. Claw foot wrench worked. Beautiful. Next will be the EGR cooler, which bolts on down there. So I'll have to find a bolt for it and uh, get it get it ready to go. Okay, so next to bolt up is the uh, EGR condenser or the EGR cooler. There's a metric 10 bolt. It bolts up there. It, uh, the manual says it's got a tension of 45 newton meters. It says not to tighten it until uh, that's been connected to the exhaust and that's been connected to the inlet. So I think I will um, do it up to tension and see how much movement I can actually get out of it. So I've tensioned it up to 45, and it's pretty tight. Uh, I can get movement out of it, but I've got to put a fair effort into it. But what I did notice is, is it can move sideways. Now, uh, that pipe that, that goes there is flexible, but that one's not. So I think the best thing is, is to leave it loose-ish, until such time as these flanges are all bolted up and then I can tighten it up. The whole reason that I'm building it up now onto the cylinder head is that's how I took it off because it's so hard to get in on the back of the engine to, to undo all these bolts and in particular is the vacuum pump one that I'll show you that in, in another clip. It is so buried deep in there that uh, it's very very difficult to get out. So I figure that's how I took it off. I'll build that back up to put it back in. But I'll have to see how I can go getting a wrench into that and uh, to tighten it up once these flanges are connected. 
So uh, let's uh, let's move on. So the other things that we've got to connect on the on the back of the uh, cylinder head here are all the water hoses. So this one here connects up to the heater circuit. This one here hooks up to there with this hose that I will uh, I will put on shortly. This hose. Uh, goes a rubber hose to a metal hose that goes across the top of the cylinder head, which I think is actually one of the right to the radiator. And then on the side down here, we've got this hose, which uh, goes to the water cooler, the uh, the oil cooler, which is on the side of the engine block down here. And then this one hooks up to another hose that comes out the side of the engine block. So it's a it's a plethora of rubber plumbing. And it all uses the single ear Otica style hose clamps that I just happen to have. So in order to do all these um, small hoses, and rather than using uh, uh, conventional style hose clamps, I've opted to use the proper Otica style single ear um, hose clamps. So all of these ones uh, all use that uh, that single ear, that style there. So this is an old one that's been crimped and that I've taken it off now. It is actually marked uh, with 25.6. So the generic kit that I bought off uh, the big auction website that we all love, the largest it has is these ones marked don't know if you can see it and if I can see it there we go it's further around Mark 21 so I then bought some separate ones genuine Oticas and they're uh, 23.9 to 27.1 and this is one of them obviously it's not crimped yet and I'm just not sure that it'll crimp down tight enough so let's have a go Okay, so I just did one off camera and it um, it tightens up nicely. But when I look at the uh, look at the crimp, it's kind of not as uh, not as nice as the original one, but still it's uh, functional and it's uh, it's pretty tight. So I'll see if I can prop the camera up and do another one. Now this uh, generic kit that I bought off the, our favourite auction website. Just included those, which to me just looks like a really large pair of nail pincers, and you could probably end up cutting it right off with those because, yeah, I just think they're nail pincers. So they, I don't think they're the proper tool, but they work. So I'll prop the camera up and see if we can um, see me doing the other one. been easier to do this one off camera and uh, do the other one on camera some more thumbs all right let's see if we can get it the right position without dropping it yeah that looks pretty good So again, it pulled up nicely, but she, she no look will flash. So I might actually get a heavy implement and just uh, just tap that in. So I uh, gave it a bit of a tap, which seemed to loosen it up. So I gave it a bit of a recrimp, 
and then gave it another tap and it's, uh, it's folding nicely so it's actually uh, it's holding it, it's holding it all together nicely now still got movement in it so when I bolt up the flanges it uh, it'll all fit together so next to be installed is the vacuum pump now this is a bit of an interesting one so the vacuum pump has two bolts to fasten onto Where is it? One there and one there. Two bolts that fasten onto the cylinder head, lower half, and then there's another bolt that fastens onto the upper half, which is the top part of the uh, the cam bearings. Now, noting that um, the cam shafts run right over the head bolts, is this cylinder head has got to go in without any of the cam gear in it, and then uh, once it's the heads in and torque down, and then the the cam shafts can go in, and then uh, the connection to the vacuum pump, which is basically keyed to the end of the uh, exhaust camshaft there. Um, now, it seals onto the back of the cylinder head by O-rings. So it has an O-ring groove around the main body there, and it has an O-ring around there, which is the oil port. So the vacuum pump gets pressure-fed oil. So the large o-ring obviously seals around this outer periphery here then we'll have a join when the top part goes on so when the loctite loctite 510 goes on it has to come sort of right out to here in order for it to seal now um the old o-rings when i pulled it apart were squashed flat so there's the one for the main body and uh, there's the one for the the oil passage I don't know if you can see but it's flat now when I went to get some uh, parts from the dealer the o-rings are not available as separate service items you have to get a whole new vacuum pump so rather than do, do that I just measured them found them on uh, online on my favorite auction website and just bought some so uh, they will get replaced so I'll be lubing them up with a bit of uh, silicon grease bit of silicon paste and obviously I'll install it but when um, when the, the top part of the bearing cap goes on it'll have to work in down there so that um, it won't pull the o-ring out the rest of the o-ring that will be in the top part of the, uh, the vacuum pump um, will seal up nicely so I'm going to set about installing that now so as you can see the vacuum pump is on um, I remember now why I took it off with the cylinder head rather than removing it to remove the cylinder head there's one bolt right under there there and the other bolts right under there and both of them fell on this hose here um, so we're even trying to uh, to get the socket and the extension on the torque wrench in it's even even a tight fit especially in there now, if you look on this side, you can actually see the housing o-ring there, which uh, I'll probably pack with a bit of grease to hold it in position so that when I slide the upper carrier in, it doesn't, uh, doesn't pick it up and, and pull it out, pull it out of the groove. But uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, the great design we've got here. You can't actually build up your head until it's in the car, again, because the head bolts are under the camshaft. Camshaft, head bolt. So, yeah, it uh, just lacks a little bit of finesse in that engineering. So I think the next step now is there's two manifold studs on the inlet and the glow plugs. All right, so I'll turn it all around and find that in the, in the trunk. Okay, so now I've turned the cylinder head around and we're gonna start working on the, uh, the inlet side. So we can see everything else that we've put on earlier. And let's start with the glow plugs. I've twisted, tested all the glow plugs with the 12 volt battery and they get a nice nice glow they're obviously very long they fit down these holes and they actually protrude very slightly from the uh, the underside of the cylinder head so there, I will have video of the other side of the cylinder head when when uh, we're prepared to install it uh, but you will see the uh, the glow plugs sticking out through the bottom so that's why I've got it propped up on blocks of wood apart from the fact that that sticks below the, uh, the parting line. Um, I just don't want to uh, damage my glow plugs. So I'll set about uh, installing them and then tension them and uh, 
they're all uh, nine newton meters plus or minus three newton meters so I'm actually going for 12, 12 newton meters um, I think they rely on a on a taper seat they have a taper seat that uh, seals into the combustion chamber but uh, given these common rail diesels are only pushing 16 to 1 compression ratio so they're not quite like the uh, the old style ones that were uh, pushing 22 to run one like my Daihatsu and uh, it has uh, glow plugs that are a little bit more substantial than these um, these little things so you want to be quite gentle with these as uh, the tip of them is easily damaged so I'm just hand tightening them until I can hand tighten them no more so the uh, glow plugs have all been uh, run down of Lube their thread up with a bit of um, copper indices. I don't know if you can see, but you can just see the just see the tip of the glow plug protruding out the bottom of the parting joint of the cylinder head. So now I have to be very careful. I don't put it down on that face, or I risk really, really damaging those glow plugs. So now I'm going to uh, use a very small. Deep socket, 8mm, and a torque wrench, and torque them all up.